Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Face World Media. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you a tool that you may already be familiar with called Eventbrite. Now, I want to show you how you can use Eventbrite to now broadcast and market all your events, whether it's on or offline. This way, instead of relying on just Zoom meetings alone, which doesn't really come packed with a lot of features, if you don't purchase, for example, a plan such as webinar, you're kind of stuck because people are going to sign up for the event and forget about it or don't know how to add it to their calendars. They don't have reminders a day or an hour, 10 minutes before the event. Eventbrite will solve all of that for you and more. What is that more? I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks including how to add that event with a single click to your Facebook page or pages. This is a step tutorial. I'm not going to skip over anything. The reason is Eventbrite has already re-engineered a lot of their user interfaces. I've been using it for over 10 years and they've changed so much. So many features are also new to me. So I hope you enjoy this. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I am so passionate to speaking right to your ears, my creative entrepreneurs out there, whether you think you are one or not. I want to make sure that this information will help you and your family build a business, build the projects you love. And I can't wait to see you into the new year, into 2021. I'll see you at the end of this. Hey, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Restream. Restream helps me be everywhere at once and tripled my views, my engagement in a short few weeks. I think Restream is a must have for independent creators, a podcaster, live streamers. So definitely check it out. There's a special deal for you right from FaceWorld. Would love. And let's go back to today's video. First, go to Eventbrite and sign up or log in with your credentials. So as you can see, like a sneak peek behind my window, we are promoting an event by this young girl named Nana Miyoshi. And the organizer is the Alexander and Bono Academy. So here I have the selection to choose type and then categories. So for type, let's find something close. So in this case, concert and performance, you want to choose the appropriate category for you. And under that, I'm going to choose, let's see, if there's any music available right here. Piano concert. Location, here I'm going to select online event. And you will see the online event will have unique event pages where you can add links to live stream or more. So you can leave online event just by selecting that. And on the following screens, you'll be able to update the detailed information. Now, let's take a look at date and time. For me, this is a single event and the date has been set on December 16th. So let me go ahead and select that. And it will be 7 p.m. Yay. And it ends in exactly one hour or around that. And here are additional options. And it knows that I'm in New York time. So let's hit save and continue. Now I can drag and drop uh, or click to add main event images. There's some requirements here. And there are also um, the you know, aspect ratio uh, right here that you can you know, edit and create an image just for that. Uh, again, I'm a really big fan of Canva. I pretty much design everything there. And you can now add further descriptions, uh, schedule, sponsors, and featured guests. So I'll take my time and just edit that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I just took a moment to basically uh, put together this simple banner according to Eventbrite's requirement. I'm just going to go ahead and download that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to click on this main event page and just bring that in. All right, I like how it looks. Here are my brief descriptions. Let's click on save and continue. Now, here's your online event page details. As a turnout, um, you can actually access and, and add this information. You know, you can connect Zoom uh, as well as YouTube Live. So what I wanted to show you guys is there are a lot of icons, a lot of options for you to choose from. And the first time I made the mistake of thinking I can only select one, but as it turned out, you can build these as many as you want. I just clicked on YouTube Live and Livestream. As you can see, you can actually customize YouTube Live right here. You can include another way for people to watch on a custom Livestream service. And here you can include a unique Livestream link, YouTube link here. At the bottom, you can also share any important, any additional details with your attendees before they join the event as well, such as 
you know, like a teaser or a promo video or any images um, or links you want them to access and see. I think some of these options here would be really good for business purposes, such as like a business webinar. From a logistical point of view, this online event page here is only for people who sign up for your event, whether it's paid or free. So it means that they have to register in order to see this. So please do not worry that this is not a completely wide open public page. What I also like about this feature, which it doesn't talk about, is this so-called live stream link here. It really can be anything because it can be, for example, your Facebook Live or your Twitter or Periscope Live. It can be a public link anywhere, including the same way as you're using YouTube Live. So let's see what happens if I go ahead and just cancel this for now and I want to build out the rest of the pages. You see, the moment I cancel those out right now, it says this is grayed out. So I have to leave something on this page before I can continue. In this case, I'm going to use the Facebook page. I will click on live stream. And here in this URL, you want to make sure it's something that people can actually access without, you know, additional passwords and logins. So right here, I can just say, this is the link. You can add additional live stream instructions and this part is optional. Now I can click on save and continue. And if I want to add uh, more options later on, I can always come back to that page and deal with it later. So as mentioned, this is a completely free event. And here on the next step here, num step number four, we're creating tickets. So these were called general admissions and quantities. It's actually kind of unlimited, but it is required. So I'm going to say, uh, you can say 100, 1,000, even 10,000. Knowing the typical attendees or attendance to our concerts, I think 1,000 is pretty safe. Things you can set, such as ticket visibility, um, tickets per order, what is the minimum or maximum order. Here, I'm going to say if a parent is willing to you know, sign up for multiple people of the family, I allow them to purchase more than one ticket. Not everybody needs a unique email address to sign up for these tickets. But if you would like everybody to have a unique email to register for the event, you do want to keep maximum quality on one. So if everything looks good, let's click on save. And it will move you to the final step. Now you get to decide who can see the event. I really like the fact that Eventbrite is not only a platform for you to create events, it also is a marketplace and it's itself a search engine. So if you want more people to discover your event, I highly recommend that you keep it as public. And you can also choose whether you want to publish now or you want to choose a schedule publish, which means you can publish the event at a future date. So I'm going to click on publish and the event is live. Now, if there are a ton of, uh, you know, edits you want to definitely make, for example, you're still deciding where you want to drive your traffic. I definitely have a few things to say about that. As for us, my client, Alexander and Bono, most of their engagements actually happen on their Facebook pages, uh, especially this one that I mentioned where we're going to go live. The engagements, uh, it definitely are higher and they have other pages as well, but I think it's important not to confuse people, you know, send them to a single page. Worst case scenario, if you go live on one of your pages on Facebook, you can actually reshare that when you go live to other pages as well. So you really only need one original signal. Let's come back to Eventbrite. Final words on this. Eventbrite is really helpful because as you can see on the marketing overview page, it's already directing you to have the ability to directly share on Facebook, on Messenger, Twitter, via email. I believe this is WhatsApp, LinkedIn. And this is your event URL that you can just copy, paste, share right away. You can also take a look at this section here, get the most exposure for your event. Right here, you know, there's add to Facebook. So let people get tickets directly on Facebook so you can reach a bigger audience for free. Email marketing, send, create and send email invitations. So we do this outside of Eventbrite because uh, we have been using MailChimp and also ConvertKit for this purpose. You can also set up paid social ads. This is something relatively new on Eventbrite. I mean, new as in they've been promoting this since the beginning of 2020. And a lot of people are seeing some really good results. I personally have not used it. So uh, in order to promote it on Facebook, you do have to set it up. So from here, uh, it's showing you what it looks like, the ticket information, price, and featured image. And uh, from here, you just have to click on connect to Facebook. 
And down here, you can choose to publish this event to different pages. I'm going to select Alexander and Bono International. You can also help other people find your event. Facebook requires that online events sets a location to help people find your event in their time zone. This location will not show on your Facebook at event listing. So I'm going to select New York, New York. Your event is live on Facebook. All right. So looks like there was a bit of a delay. And again, you can actually have the option to delete your Facebook event, which means it's going to delete directly from Facebook. You can edit the event right here. And OK, let's click on this link and see what happens. I like this. It says Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, Nana Miyoshi. I always get a little bit nervous of how I spell the names and make sure that's correct. As you can see, it's online event. Tickets are purchased via Eventbrite. There is a link you can invite friends directly and um, has requested to co-host this event. I'm going to accept. Again, you can invite more people to this as well. And to find tickets, you click on this link. And this will take you right back to Eventbrite to reserve the ticket. So, okay, so in order to register, just click on register. This drop down allows you to purchase up to 10 tickets per person. So I'm going to just pretend and just register for the event for myself. So click on register so you guys can see the entire workflow. Immediately, um, Eventbrite recognize my contact information is going to drop it in right here. And actually, I'm going to edit this information um, just so that uh, I can enter my personal email. You can also, uh, you can either continue as a guest or log in for faster experience. I know a lot of people do have Eventbrite a login, it may be easier, but here I sort of have to type in my information twice. And you have the option to, uh, again, keep updated on the latest news. You can lend Eventbrite to send me emails about the best events happening nearby. I'm going to uncheck that for right now and I click on register. And that is it. Thank you for your order. Uh, Not a Miyoshi piano, and it's showing me the date and time. And uh, I can follow the organization. I can view the ticket itself. You know, have a dedicated page, but I do have to uh, sign in, as it looks like. So let's take a look at what my email looks like. You got tickets, Faye, and your event will be hosted online. Check out the event page for all the information you need. And here is the banner. Lastly, on the Eventbrite emails setting, this is very important because. We're all bombarded with digital and physical events, and it's really easy to forget what we signed up for. And you don't want people to miss out, especially if you're really thriving on live content. So within Eventbrite, what you want to do is go to the event and click on Manage My Events. And you're going to scroll down on the left-hand side. You'll notice a lot of options. We're not going to go over all of them today, especially marketing, advertising. Instead, you want to go to Manage Attendees. Under that, you're going to click on emails to attendees. Once you arrive on this page, you're going to see all the scheduled event. And this is, by the way, pre-configured. And also there's a tab for what's already been sent. It takes a moment to refresh. And so let's come back to email scheduled. And this is following Eventbrite's best practices. Uh, as you can see, what you have is reminder for Nana. And this is two days before two hours before and then 10 minutes beforehand. I recommend that you keep this as is, but it doesn't mean that you can schedule a new one. So you can also create new attendee email right here by click on this bright orange button. Once you're there and you can actually, uh, you know, change the name. This is the name of the organization to keep it as is to attendee. And here is selected attendees. You can uh, send it to all attendees, all attendees registered after date, specific attendees, attendees by ticket types. So if it's for everybody, then you can just set the subject line. You can type in the message. I'm never, I've never been a fan of this, this whole WYSIWYG from Eventbrite. It seems like for years, for 10 years, this is the one thing they haven't changed, but you just got to use whatever they have. And you can also set the uh, test message to this. And this is, by the way, the default account email. And you can schedule when you send this email. You can, again, send it right now or days, hours, or minutes before the event. Okay, so this is actually really helpful. Again, this is core and key to how you drive up engagement and attendance for your events. This is something Eventbrite does really well, and Zoom doesn't do much at all. 
So that's it, guys. And I hope you find this helpful. And again, this is Faith from Face World Media. Thank you so much for watching. And I wish you having a bright new year in 2021. Please take care. Keep on creating and build a successful business online. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because I cannot wait to see you in a future video very soon. Thank you.